Hello, hello, and welcome back for another round of Damp, Danger, and Daring Do as we once again send a plucky band of bombastic heroes to brave the horrors of Perfidious Manor in Darkest Dungeon. And what lies in store for our stalwart band of heroes? Well, in all honesty, probably nothing good since we're about to send them off to battle an apprentice necromancer. And if movies and television have taught me anything, and let's face it, movies and television are the only thing that have ever taught me anything, it's that uh, screwing around with a necromancer always ends badly. Unless, unless you're Gandalf the Grey. In which case, screwing around with an apprentice necromancer merely sets the stage for a later moment of big damn heroes badassery. But, uh, you know, unluckily for us, we don't have Gandalf at our service. And given the fact that we have a full roster and no ability to upgrade said roster, as you can see, we're lacking a few, uh, few deeds for that. But since Gandalf isn't on a team and we can't upgrade to kind of get Gandalf on a team and also it doesn't look like there's a Gandalf available at any rate, we won't be recruiting a Gandalf anytime soon, which likely means that our team is going to wind up dead, reanimated, and jitterbugging to the tune of Van Hell's Dance Macabre. And if you get that last reference, I'll be fucking surprised. Anyway, let's uh, let's get to work here. We are going after the Apprentice Necromancer. We've got everything we need sort of set up, so let's get to it. We're headed down on an estate map. We're going to take our A-team. B.A. Baracus there, Roderick Usher. Of course, half Cock Jack, who's clearly face man. Randolph Carter, who I think makes a completely effective Howling Mad Murdoch. And... Also, Madeline Usher, because apparently Hannibal Smith was not available. Not because Madeline Usher is a chick, but because Hannibal was clearly not a healer. I mean, he doesn't really seem like a cleric to me. Hannibal, I would say, more of uh, perhaps a jester. Although, arguably, I guess Howling Mad could be the jester, too. But uh, Hannibal also could be, well, you know, much like Hannibal Lecter, a plague doctor seems like it would be sort of appropriate for Hannibal Smith anyway. But uh, now I've gone off on a weird tangent about a television show from the 80s that honestly wasn't really that good. A lot of people remember it through rose-colored glasses, I think. If you actually go back and watch the A-Team nowadays, it doesn't necessarily hold up so well. Anyway, it's enough A-Team bullshit. Let's get to work. Now, this is a medium dungeon. We're going to be camping at least once. I'm going to bring plenty of food. And if anything, on this mission, I want to be over-prepared. I'm going to bring 12 torches as well. You know what? No. I'm going to bring 14 torches. Two shovels and one key. I'm, I'm very seriously considering bringing another shovel, actually. But I think we'll be okay. So there we go. If anything, I would rather be over-prepared to fight the Apprentice Necromancer than under-prepared. It's a sweet hat, dude. Except that the face part of it looks like a fucking puckered butthole. Who the hell designed that? Don't tell me it's like Gucci or Versace or anything like that, because... I'm pretty sure Butthole Mask was not the rage this year in Milan. Just throwing that out there. Your, your, your face looks like a butthole, dude. You should, you should rethink your costume. Well, this map is fucking awful. So based on my wild guess, because that's all this is, I'm going to guess that the Necromancer will be here or here. I don't like that this is often unexplored, but I don't really feel... I, I don't think he would be that close to the entrance. I really don't. I'm guessing either here or here. So I think our plan of attack will be go this way and hope we get scouting in one of these two rooms. Anyway, let's get to work. Now, we can camp, and stress is going to be a problem because some of our troopers have a little bit of stress coming in. So we are going to want to keep an eye on that. Randolph Carter is our official designated opener of mysterious objects now because uh, he always seems to find treasure. So, you know, if you got a treasure cat, you loose the treasure cat Even and wait for him to bring you back something that's not Gary Peterson's Wonder Wand. And if you got that reference again, I'd be fucking surprised. And also, good for you, because you're onto a good thing. Mr. Wong was the fucking shit. If you're not familiar with Mr. Wong, Google it. Good stuff. It was back in the early days when the internet was weird. Er, well, actually less weird. Oh, hey, they put the little turn indicator. So we're playing an updated version. They actually just did an update today, which added these little turn counters so you can tell when everyone has gone. It's just a sort of a notification so you know who has gone and who has not gone. 
Why do you have hands from the Abyss equipped, Randolph Carter? You should not have hands from the Abyss equipped. Oh, because it's it's all you have? Oh yeah, sorry. Never mind. I'm sorry, Randolph. I have falsely accused you of sucking. Now I could legitimately accuse you of sucking, though, after that double dodge. That was kind of bullshit there, Randy. Here comes the big guy. What's he got? Uh, he's going to push our dude back. You know what? Apart from the stun, which sucks, the being pushed back is not necessarily too tragic. Except for the fact that we can't use Grape Shot Blast now, which really sucks. We can't bleed the undead. Now let's just try and get it. Well, I was hoping we could get full damage out of the Bone Soldier, but no such luck. We dazzling. We could Dazzling Light him to death for sure. We're going for the kill, though. We could just straight up go for a Judgment. Let's do that. As the fiend falls, Definitely should have thrown that at a Bone Courtier, but, I mean, we had no way to predict that it was going to be a massive critical. There was no way to know that beforehand. Roderick Usher does, of course, nothing. I really, really hate these Bone Courtiers. Tempting Goblet is some serious bullshit ability. Give me ten. Give me none, that because that's way better. Giving me none, that's exactly what I needed. Yeah, Madeline Usher. See, if you had hit even done even three, we we wouldn't be having this conversation. Also, uh, perhaps a stab to the face. Oh, for once, Randolph Carter comes up empty. Usually, stab to the face is Randolph Carter's jam. He's all over that shit. So we are gonna Holy Lance, because I want to get back to the front. Also, Holy Rance occasionally does that, which is why I have it as an ability. Periodically, it puts your guy right back where he needs to be, and then also does just a atrocious amount of damage. Him bonking Randy back, or Roderick back over and over is, is actually not bad for us. Facial stabbing? Still no. Randolph, uh, 0 for 2 on this mission, and I gotta say, you're starting to look like Cubs spring training over there, Randolph. Meanwhile, Roderick Usher is piling up what is frankly an unacceptable level of stress. Why is that guy unhittable? Please, please judge him. Thank you. Madeline Usher is carrying your asses, boys. Not that there's anything wrong with being carried by a girl. It's just you're being carried by our healer. That's the problem. It wouldn't, you know, Madeline's gender has nothing to do with this. It's the fact that our healer is fucking carrying this shit. You guys got to do better. Expect more out of you. Both of you. Actually, all three of you. You haven't exactly been tearing it up either, Randy. Three heal. At least he resisted a bleed. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna stun this guy if we can. Stun him. Good. Can you inspiring cry yourself? You can. We did that not for the regular heal, but for the stress heal. We're we're trying to get our stress down a little bit. Another two damage and another another turn of stun. I'll take it. Let's get a heal off then. Gonna patch half cock Jack back up. Stun wears off. Half cock goes for the throat. Connects, but uh, alas, not a lot of tender flesh there to uh, take damage in the throat stabbing. So Roderick Usher finally decides to contribute, and while I'm glad for the stress reduction, Roderick, I gotta say, it's a little bit of a too little too late sort of situation. That is an interesting trinket. Not fantastic, but it's also not terrible. Alright, so let's reorder our party. Randolph, Roderick, whatever the hell your name is. It's having two guys with the R name in the same party really is kind of a verbal tragedy for me. I'm never going to get it right. Like I said, Randolph Carter always finds treasure. He is the treasure cat. Always oh, the treasure cat. You know, I really would have much preferred to have scouted this room. I'm just, I'm just saying. All right, Randy. Well, I'd, uh, for once, Randolph Carter realizes his role is designated and doesn't even... Uh... Oh, wow, that is the best thing we've ever gotten out of one of those. Fantastic. I guess maybe if the quirk... Was that the quirk that made him do it? It, it had to have been, because it was his only negative trait. Huh, interesting. So confessional booths can get rid of traits you don't want. Very intriguing. There's a trap up here. Uh, you know, I, th I think this is probably a half-cocked Jack moment. Yeah, well, there you go. So the one thing we've definitively learned about half-cocked Jack is that the only way he ever approaches disarming a trap is just flinging himself into them bodily. That's that's sort of his method. There's a trap over there, and then he just plunges into it like a fucking crazy asshole. Which I guess makes sense, because he's kind of a crazy asshole, so... We are not going to go that way. I, I, I can't imagine that they put the, the Necromancer right there. Just... 
I can't imagine it. There goes our last shovel. That's a problem. Shovels, really useful. Need more shovels. Oh, for once, Randolph Carter didn't find treasure. Guess his treasure's cat senses are a little off. I'm gonna crack another torch here. Let's head in. The reason I'm using these torches, I really would like to scout, if at all possible. We would like to increase our scouting chance as much as is, you know, humanly achievable. 12 damage there from half cock jack. That's a reasonable output. We'll take it. Yeah, we're going to go for the Abyssal Artillery. And this time, Randolph Carter starting things off with a bang for us. Nicely done. You know, we could heal, but we've got a chance to get a kill. A kill? We, we are going to steal the bottom of a ship, folks. We have a chance to get a kill before that guy can pile some stress on us, so I'm going to do it, and it worked out nicely. Quite pleased, Madeline Usher. You have been fucking lights out aces this match, I gotta say. I don't really mind Roderick getting pushed back. Roderick's just gonna slice forward with the Holy Lance and fucking ruin somebody's shit. Specifically, he's gonna slice forward with the Lance and ruin that guy's shit. Or, well, maybe mildly inconvenience his shit would be a better description. Our little Divine Grace at Hackcock Jack. He's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit wounded there. Ren for the old god. So Halfcock bleeding pretty badly, actually. If he had to stress someone, Randolph Carter is the right pick. Randolph uh, has a, a high crit chance, so he's going to get a lot of self-stress reduction from the criticals. And the enemy polite enough to push us back into our desired order. That was nice of them. In return, we're going to reward them with a Grape Shot Blast. We've got to heal half Cock Jack. He's already bleeding, so the damage is done. Now, granted, that will actually add bleed to him if he fails to resist it. So, you know, there's that. Jack Hughes! Sir Roderick, he uh, he likes to swear at his foes in French, although Jacques Hughes is actually not any kind of swearing. half -cock Jack going to slit that cultist's throat like a good rogue does, and Randolph Carter with a bit of facial stabbing to sort of mop things up. A trifling victory. A hey, victory fuck you, Mr. Narrator. Why are all my victories... Why, why do all my victories got to be fucking trifling, Mr. Narrator, huh? Why can't it be like a resounding victory or a fucking magnificent victory? Why, why they always got to be trifling, man? What's up with that? We're gonna eat some of this food. Half cock Jack is, uh, well, his uncontrolled bleeding is becoming something of a problem. Sharp's risk. Let's have him check out the altar. This is normally we douse it in holy water, but now well, we got lucky. What kind of buff did we get? Plus twenty percent damage. That's amazing. So we haven't had any hallway battles. Now we're gonna eat then. There goes some of our available food. How much food have we got left? 10. So we can eat two more before we need to consider camping so we can take advantage of the stress reduction from feasting our heroes. Two torches are going to get used here. Max our light level. Really need to scout here in the near future, fellas. Someone. Anyone. Thank you. Perfect. Exactly what we needed, in fact. You scouted one room. Brilliant. Well done. Real, real proud of everyone. Fantastic job. Stack of books, Randy. Check it out. Uh, desiccated and unremarkable. Must be a Cormac McCarthy novel. <laughs> uh, kid Cormac McCarthy, because he's awful. I know he's popular, but uh, hey, unpopular opinion. I don't like Cormac McCarthy. His prose is stilted and weird. Make of that what you will. Also, please kill that Fusilier before he completely decimates us. Too late. Well, at least that wasn't a critical, so we'll take what we can get. Group heal? Yeah, group heal. Group hug, everyone huddle up. Madeline Usher's gonna get you taken care of. Can you stab that guy in the face, Randy? Stab him, man. You can poke at his face, I guess. Not necessarily stab him in it, but um, we'll take what we can get at this point. Roderick Usher, you are real slow, buddy. Real slow. Perhaps a little Jacques? Oh, you got one of them. I'll take it. Don't critical. All right, then. Damage is, you know, damage is just damage. We can handle that shit. Open his vein. Uh, you may have opened it a little further than we were anticipating. Not that that's a complaint in any way, shape, or form, half cock Jack. We're actually pretty pleased with the amount of vein opening that was conducted. But, uh, you know, I think we got a Divine Grace Jack. I really would like to get... Yeah, this guy's going to go. Probably, uh, yeah, he just basically undid everything we, we, we spent a turn doing. So that's lovely. A little stress reduction for Sir Roderick, however, with a mighty smite. And they say that attack does poor damage. Ha. 
So too will resistance. All right, so into this room then. What's our light level like? Still above 75, but not now. Let's crank that back up then. And in here. Scouting this room would be perfect, gentlemen. Just, uh, just throwing that out there. Nope. All right then. You know what? Let's just make camp here then. Everyone tuck in for the evening. So we're going to feast, of course. Big heal, most importantly, massive stress reduction. Madeline actually at no stress. Randy down to only eight. Let's take a look at our camp abilities. Encourage. Somebody's stress goes down by 10. His stress resist goes up. That's actually useful. All companions heal 10% and their stress is reduced by 10. That's quite good. Quite good. We may do that. So that takes five time. Bandit sense is pretty good. Takes almost no time. Cleaning guns is real good. That, that would be 10 of our time spoken for. Uh, he's not badly hurt enough to need that. He doesn't have enough stress to need to abandon hope. Don't really need him to wound care. Uh, we could bless someone. That would be good. And we could also chant. We might be able to get all this in. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. First things first, zealous speech. Sir Roderick, recite something for us from maybe the Upanishads or, you know. No? Alright, well. A little less remarkable than we had hoped. So let's bandit sense then, so we don't get surprised. And then we're going to go ahead and have half cock jack clean his guns. We're going to need those guns, and uh, we're going to need them to be clean. And then I think we will have... Do we want to stress or would we... You know, I'd rather bless, actually. Let's bless... This dodge is so poor, I don't really think having plus 10 to it's going to... It does give him bonus accuracy. You know what? Bonus accuracy is more useful for Randy. Let's give it to Randy. Randolph, of course, may refuse that blessing, being the inveterate uh, sort of occultist and instigator that he is. I'm not, not necessarily sure he's going to sort of be willing to accept the favor of the triune god, but uh, he'll have to buck up and deal with it, because it's done is done. The match is struck. On the downside, the we're not exactly forward. sporting a lot of food here, and don't really have a whole lot of opportunity to obtain more food, so that's bad. We don't, how many torches have we got left? Why can I, I don't have counts on food or torches anymore? Seems like a bug that may have been introduced in the most recent patch. Randy? We do have a key. There we go. Oh! Finding the stuff is only the first test. That key proved to be now very valuable. 2,500 gold in loot in one single chest. That's why you buy keys, folks. That's why you buy keys right there. And continuing forward then, we're looking for this necromancer. And uh, Roderick Usher found not a necromancer, but a trap. Unsprung and thirsting for eh, blood. He's, he's probably okay. I really don't like going into the necromancer with somebody so badly injured, but... Uh, Alright, scouting. Perfect. This is what we needed then. Where is the necromancer? He is here. So we have two fights on our way to the necromancer. That's fine. Maybe in this first fight we can get a chance to patch ourselves up a bit. Maybe. Alright, so half cock jack's gonna lead things off with a high damage grape shot blast. Actually, yeah, that was good. 17 damage we got out of that. A little bit of sacrificial stabbing, and Mr. Acolyte Cultist is out of the picture before he even got a chance to go. So the buff's really paying some dividends for us. And I think zealous accusation? Not quite zealous enough, Roderick. Was more of a Kind of an emphatic accusation as opposed to a zealous accusation. It's maybe more of a an aggressive accusation. Not really sure it was too zealous. That's okay though, because half cock jack has bullets for everybody. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious. And we may have overpurchased slightly on the torches, it turns out. The light. That's okay, I'd rather have too many torches than not enough torches. Who wants to check out the Iron Maiden? Last time we had Sir Roderick do this, it went real badly. Let's do it again. Yeah, go check it out. Of course he inhaled foul vapors. Is he rabid again? Nope, this time he has tetanus. Oh, that sucks. What does tetanus do? It's real bad, actually. So we should probably try and get rid of that tetanus. Uh, what is it with Roderick Usher and being just affected by disease? The guy is always fucking plagued by something. I guess the fact that he's named Roderick Usher sort of inviting kind of ill fortune, now that I think about it. Still, he's always diseased. Did we get a cheap stun? Uh, this guy's got to be almost perfectly stun resistant. Yeah, almost entirely. Do we need to heal three hit points? We don't. Which one does better damage? This one. Well, let's throw a little judgment at this guy. 
Perfect. Nicely done, Madeline. Apparently, uh, Prentice Necromancer is very vulnerable to uh, accusations of malfeasance. They must have uh, poor attorneys, and they don't don't really have great uh, liability coverage. I guess their professional liability coverage as a necromancer not totally uh, not totally comprehensive. Then again, it seems like as a necromancer, it would be fairly difficult to get quality professional liability insurance. So, you know, there is that. Six feet under. I believe that's the same attack twice, then. So the apprentice necromancer, apart from heaping the stress on our boys, isn't really putting out a, uh, a glorious fight. You know what? Let's, let's skip the bony for now and just go ahead and pile some damage on Johnny Necromancer here. We could party heal, but nobody's really very hurt. I think judging him is probably better. Madeline Usher giving him a very stern, grandmotherly gaze, which, uh, you know, he feels judged. Is he going to bleed? Ooh, he's bleeding. And then I think we'll go for the accusation. Didn't kill the bone skeleton, but uh, we got some damage on all parties involved. Clawing dead. That's a new attack. Makes Okay, so everything this guy hits with us is going to make another skeleton. That's, that's not really a problem. We can deal with those guys. Can you stab him in the face? Why don't you stab him in the face? Oh, Randolph Carter with a huge stab right through the butthole of his mask. That's what happens when you wear a butthole mask, man. People are going to stab you in the butthole because, fuck it, stabbing someone in the butthole is really fucking funny. So, I mean, you should really expect to be getting stabbed. And then when you put that right over your important parts of your body, like your face, all you're, all you're doing is getting... You're asking to be stabbed in the face, dude. Your butthole-shaped face. Let's uh, go for a smite. A critical could get us a kill here. Didn't critical, didn't kill, but that guy is not long for the world. Down to 11 hit points. So more ablative skeletons for our necromancer friend. I don't think two bone soldiers is really going to be enough to get it done at this point. We are going to go for the party heal, though, because everybody is a little injured. Madeline then not coming up terribly strong in that department. Half-cocked Jack still getting a lot of good work done for us, and... Butthole stab! Oh, it was huge! Right in the anus. That's gotta suck, man. You know his butthole's especially tender. All right, then. So that went very well. Very well. Let's see what kind of loot we picked up. Not a lot of gold. A frankly not great trinket. And a frankly not great trinket. Mostly busts and crests are what we got out of that, then. Um, let's get rid of this food just to sort of get it out of our inventory. Our torches are already capped, so we can't do anything but those but drop them. Randy, if you'd do the honors of opening this chest for us, we'd appreciate it. 650 gold and a selfish pendant, which is not good at all. In fact, it's, it's, it's frankly straight up awful. That's real bad. You don't want anything that reduces damage as a Hellion. That's, that's just foolhardy. Why would you want to lower your Hellion's damage? That's a terrible idea. Could explore a little more of the dungeon. Roderick's stress is a little high, and he does have Lockjaw now, so we should probably get him some medical attention. We've uh, got a, a fair helping of cash. I mean, we're not uh, we're not Uncle Pennybags from Monopoly, but we're doing all right. Let's go ahead and bail. Our mission completion bonus of six thousand seven hundred fifty should actually make this a pretty profitable little run. Yeah, we made almost twelve grand. That's pretty good. We're gonna have more crests and uh, busts than we know what to do with. Oh, we picked up two deeds too. We may be able to upgrade. Uh, maybe we'll upgrade our stagecoach. But let's see who got what. Two exp for Sir Roderick. What's he get? Soft, delightful. Man, Roderick Usher, what is up with you at getting negative quirks? It seems to be you collect those fuckers like Pokemon, man. It's crazy. Minus one crit for Hatcock Jack is actually awful. Plus twenty stress resistant is not terrible. And of course. Randolph Carter picking up Slugger because, well, you stab enough guys in the butthole and uh, eventually somebody's going to call you Slugger. Nice job, Slugger! Alright. Let's head back to town then. Let's take a look here. Oh, wow. Uh, Candy Jade. Very good time. As we predicted, I'd like to add. As we predicted, had a very good time at the brothel. So we called that shit right there. And the defense, uh, Princess Necromancer has been defeated. We've got that uh, sort of locked off our list. All right, then. 
So, what else do we need to do? Well, Sir Roderick Usher really could use some stress relief. I believe he will only pray. Yeah. You know what else we're going to do? We're actually going to send Sir Roderick Usher to the sanitarium. Because look at this horde of fucking negative quirks that he has. Just, uh, the guy is a walking ball of neurosis. I mean, seriously, he's a... Uh, Kind of a, a Larry David level of fucking crazy. So, let's get rid of some of that. Soft, you know, Lockjaw is definitively the worst of those, so... We're gonna cure his tetanus. Is there anybody else in our sort of A-team that needs a, as a quirk they need to kind of get rid of? Uh, Madeline Usher, much like her brother. Clearly, the Usher family is doomed. Both of them just rolling in crazy. Low reflexes is not good. No cheating tippler. She will only drink, and she can't gamble. It's not really that bad. Obsessed with food is not terrible. Actually, Madeline is a crippling ball of neuroses, but, you know, they're not terrible neuroses. I mean, overall, they, they could be worse. She could be crazier. Um, that's bad. Fangophobia is... That's that's real bad. But we actually are going to... We can't take Murph into the hospital just yet for treatment, because we're probably going to need Murph. Uh, we've got no. Never mind. Candy J just got out of the uh, out of the brothel, so she'll be fine. Let's get rid of uh, let's get rid of fangophobia here. So there we go. Sanitarium is sorted. Wow. Oh, actually, this is what I want to do. I want to make make this cheaper. Let's let's do that. The front line of this war is and can we upgrade our roster and our stagecoach? No, no. Inside we need eight needs. Mind. We have four. All right. Well, we can't do that. Anybody else need any kind of stress relief or other maintenance? Jubal Early looking a little stressed. Quasimodo, eh, you know, he's uh, having a tough time at work lately. Things have been a little hectic, but I think he'll he'll survive. I think we're actually probably in pretty good shape. So with everybody sort of taken care of, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. And of course, we did defeat the Apprentice Necromancer. Pretty sound victory for us. I really feel we weren't terribly threatened at any time. So we're kind of rolling high on the hog. All right. But uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comments section. Your support does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see more Darkest Dungeon three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, feel free to subscribe as well. And we'll see you again soon.